So can Novatech recover? <laughs> That's the topic of discussion we're going to discuss today. I mean, if there actually were to come back, let's really, really, really think about it. Look, we're all hoping they're going to come back. We're all hoping that all that money they're holding in their hands will somehow magically appear back into our accounts. But we got to face reality. So let's have a real candid discussion today about that. But before we do, before we do, guys, you know, I'm on a journey. I'm doing an experiment. I'm cashing out in different projects. This particular project has been paying. I've cashed out one cycle. This is my second round. It is a bit really high risk, but I'm going to cash it out, take my money out, and then we're going to come back and we're going to have this discussion. Very, very important. I think this is one of the discussions where we got to bring some reality into this game. A lot of people are hoping. A lot of people don't understand the nature of really the dynamics that's going on in this space in as a whole in general especially in the DeFi space and me as a entrepreneur and someone who's also looking to create his own future project as i research and i'm doing a bunch of things i'm asking questions and i'm talking to other fund managers and men's i realize it's actually very very difficult in this space to make money and the reason that is is simply because we're battling a lot of things on a lot of fronts and in this video i'm going to share with you what they are and i believe if we're able to break those barriers and chains whew, we will make a lot of money not even make money our lifestyles will change talk about the wealth that will be created it's just going to be astronomical but before all that i'm not a financial advisor it's not financial advice guys i'm not here to give you advice on how to use and manage your money I'm also not soliciting you to invest in any project. I am doing an experiment. I am conducting my own journey. If you guys decide to participate in anything, just please use proper risk management. Go seek professional advice. Go and ensure that you do your own due diligence to make sure whatever it is that you're participating in is up to your standard and cup of tea. I always say understand the game, know the game, know how to play it, and then play to win. Without further ado, guys, let me go and let's cash out and then let's talk about Novatech after that okay so we are in the back end here and as you can see we do have the thousand dollars placed in and a little bit of money here so we're going to cash this out and let's see how quickly this comes in so it looks like we have opportunity to take out bitcoin it is over five dollars in tether as well so let's take out the tether first and let's see how long it will take to get this funds in Now let's enter the authentication. All right, confirm. Okay, so there's the batch ID. So should come in at any point from now. So let's take out the BTC, request withdraw. Awesome. So let's go to our Qcoin account and let's see if any of the funds has come in yet. All right, so I'm here in my Qcoin wallet. Let's refresh and let's see if any of the funds has yet come in. Beautiful. So we have 10, 12, and 50 cents. Funds have automatically been placed in here. So yeah, they are still paying, which is great. So I have about four more to go, I believe. So let's go back to the dashboard and see how much money we've cashed out. Okay, so total withdrawn, uh, 11,000. I think that's with affiliate earnings. Total earnings is $10,000. That includes by principal and profit. So I do got to do it four more times. So four more withdrawals and I will be able to finish this cycle. So we've made our money plus a little bit of profit. So I am in the profit, but it would be really nice to get my full cycle. So that's it for this part of the video. Let's now jump into the conversation. Let's talk about it. Can Novatech recover? So let's talk about that. All right. Awesome. So we got our money back from that project. Let's talk about Novatech. Hmm. So how do we get here? Let's really think about how did we get here? How did a company with so much promise, a company with so much potential, with so much hope, with so much inspiration, come to a point where a lot of people are disheartened, discouraged? I've spoken to a lot of investors, and even in my private mastermind group, a majority of them are Novatech. And I can tell you, amongst ourselves alone, we have a lot of money stuck in Novatech. And a lot of people are just trying to find ways to recoup the money they have in there because they have plans for it. Some people had real estate plans. Some people had plans for their kids. Some people took money for their kids' university, grew it because they want to pay for their tuition. Like when I hear the story, it saddens my heart because there is so much, just so much responsibility, especially I believe as a child of God, 
when you create something and a lot of people depend on that, especially their livelihood and money. And I believe money is an energy and it's a spirit. And even me personally, if I was in Cynthia's shoes, I don't even feel comfortable holding that amount of money, understanding and knowing if I have the money and people are struggling and the money is not mine. Maybe my portion I understand, but the portion that's not mine, I don't want to hold on to it, right? Right now I owe money, I, have, I owe some debt, won't lie, even with individuals, corporations, companies, even the, even the government. If I had all the money available right now, I would probably just clear all the debt because I understand that just being free of debt and having that responsibility and just having it just over your head like that, just, there's nothing more than being debt free, trust me. But at the same time, I can understand where she's coming from, but I don't think it's justified. Especially if you haven't said anything, it's been a while. It's gonna be a year, think about it. In about four or five months, it's gonna be one whole year since we haven't heard from Cynthia. To me, unheard of, right? Now, let's assume, let's create a hypothetical situation here. And again, guys, I am not doing this video to discourage anyone to, kind of swayed you one way or another to have an, a certain expectation or I'm trying to convince you one way or another whether you're pro Cynthia or against Cynthia that is not my that's not my decision to make for you on your behalf I'm not trying to be pro anyone or against anybody I just understand how the space works now and because of my understanding I kind of have come to my own conclusion on what I should do and what's best for me. So at the end of the day, you guys already know my position, those that have been following me on my channel, you guys understand my position on this whole Novatech thing. Again, my position is very simple and it was this. Follow my complaint so that if anything is to happen in the future, my name is recorded, especially if I have a large sum of money, especially if they're gonna go through any legal proceedings to try and get everybody's money back or trying to make everybody whole again. If that's the case, then I told people I think they should at least file a complaint so it's registered with the SEC. Now, if the SEC has locked their funds, it's frozen, or whatever the case is, we don't even know any of that. Let's just say it is. If it is, don't you want your name in there? There's thousands of investors worldwide. Do you think they're gonna chase everybody to try to get their money back? No. So that's why I said that. My other stance is I think they're gone. Personally, I don't think they're coming back. And the reason I don't think they're coming back is largely because of the lack of communication and direction from the leadership. They have gone silent. Another reason that I think they're not coming back, if they were to do this one thing, then I would have reconsidered. However, they have not attended any of the hearings. The Ontario hearings, the last two, they haven't attended. All the hearings in the States, anything that they were sent legally has not been responded to. And that is not a company that is trying to fight back or trying to get back into the rough of things. So again, I'm making this video to share with you the reality of it. However, I'll continue to do videos until the whole Novatech finale is done and we actually know what it is, until the website's down or the website's up or Cynthia starts to talk again. Of course, I will always voice my opinion, uh, but at the same time, just wanna be real with the community, especially the Novatech community. I have people, don't get me wrong, I have people who have money in here that I've recommended that they have placed their money and they need their funds, right? One of the ladies requires their funds to go back home. One of their family member has passed away and they need the funds for a funeral. And they were hoping that they will get access to the money that they have nicely accumulated. Didn't take a dime out. It took almost $2,000, has grown to $10,000, which right now would have done them wonders because they need access to the money. And I feel bad because of the situation. All I'm trying to say is that the fact that they're not answering or responding to any of the correspondence in regards to the allegations and things of that nature puts basically the company in a bad position. But let's just assume, let's assume they finally respond. Let's be a good Samaritan here. And let's just say hypothetically, hypothetically, Novatech uh, or Cynthia, the leaders, come out from the trenches and they decide, you know what, let's fight back. We have a strategy in play. Now let's get back into the groove of things. So the question is, what must happen in order for Novatech to get back to good standing and get to the company that we know it to be and prove to their critics and detractors that they are authentic, that they are real, and that 
actual trading and actual business activities are conducted and they are not a Ponzi scheme nor a pyramid scheme or a fraud. All right, so I've basically jotted down a couple of things and we'll discuss them with you. And I am very aware of these things because I myself was planning to create a hedge fund. I looked really into it. We spent about, my partner and I, about $12,000 out of our own pocket to get the whole thing started, but we didn't finish. Because I lost money in the space and other projects, I couldn't finish. And our investment was to be about 50,000 US just to have everything structured legally. It's quite extensive, right? Plus, if we were to incorporate in Canada, we will need a minimum of $150,000 from our own pocket to have in the fund to start the fund. And there's other rules and there's other stipulations and other things of that nature. Now, if Novatech wanted to come back, the first thing they need to do is respond to the allegation. They need to go and respond to all the legal situations, get a lawyer, uh, write back if they need to kind of extend some of the dates in order for them to respond. They would have to write to the OSC, they would have to write to the SEC and all the regulations across the world because they dealt with a lot of investors across the world. That's number one. They would have to deal with those legal matters right away. There's also investors that have personal lawsuits against them that are pursuing them. They got to deal with all of that. Okay, let's just assume they say, look, we are in this position. We want to come back. We want to bring the company back to good standing. That is in accordance to what the regulators are looking for. Number one, they would have to pay a lot of fines. They will have to show their books. They would have to get an audit done on them. So I believe they would need a reputable company to come and do a full audit on their books on how they managed the money for three and a half years. It would be a long, very long audit that would have to be done, but let's assume they do the audit and a lot of things will come up in that. Let's just assume they did everything by the book and it was good. What would happen is the SEC will find them for operating under no license. So basically what would happen is assuming the audit came out good, assuming the audit was okay, the SEC, OSC, all the security commissions, if they want to continue to operate, let's say in Canada, Ontario, and other provinces, each province will sue Novatech. I want you to get this. Each state, each province in the US and Canada will sue Novatech then all the other countries in the world will probably follow suit. Novatech has an option. They either can forget about those jurisdictions and only operate in the jurisdictions that they're not qualified to operate in, just like a lot of companies have done. So Binance has done that, Qcoin, for example, has uh, left Canada. There's a lot of crypto companies that have left Canada and the US because of the regulations, because of the fact it's not kind of crypto friendly right now they have left and they have put their base in other countries. Now it's up to the, let's say, residents that operate in that jurisdiction. If they want to participate in those type of companies, the risk is on you. If anything happens, you're not protected, especially by your country, right? Like if I'm a Canadian and I invest in Qcoin, I lose my money. I can't go to the Canadian government and say, hey, I lost my money in Qcoin because they're not regulated in Canada. I hope you get what I'm trying to say. Nevertheless, though, some of these other companies are not even taking residence in Canada and the U.S. So that's the first hurdle. If Novatech decides to go that route, they don't have to be legally binding to operate in any of, let's say, Canada, U.S., Europe, and all these other countries that have kind of told them to seize operations. They don't have to operate there. They can go to Africa. They can go to the Caribbean. And then if you want to invest in them, maybe perhaps you would need a family member or you will need citizenship in those other countries where you can invest within Novatech. That's an option that they can take. That's an action they could have take. And quite frankly, thinking about it, they could have actually still ran their operations without running it in the jurisdictions that they were told to seize their operations in. So they could have just given investors in those jurisdictions back their money and then still operate in the jurisdictions where they can operate. But the problem with it is majority of their investors actually came from the US and it came from Canada and parts of Europe. And so because of that, <laughs> they would have lost a lot of liquidity and the ability to kind of effectively run their business. So let's now assume that they decide, you know what, we are gonna fight the battle. We wanna be regulated, we wanna uphold the law and we're gonna do everything right. So what will happen next? Well, my personal opinion, they should call Bridger 
Pennington. <laughs> they should call Bridger. He will help them structure and organize their fund in a good way. They need a mentor. They need to get somebody who understands the game that have raised millions of dollars, just like they have raised millions of dollars to restructure the whole format of how Novatech operates. Maybe take out even the MLM component out, structure it where they have a better prospectus, they have a better structure in their fund, they have a better reporting system, they have a better auditing system so that in the future as they're operating they won't encounter these issues right so the second thing i think they should do is seek somebody in the space they can get mentorship from to help manage and structure and restructure their fund in a better manner so they need either a lawyer either someone like bridger or somebody of that nature to come and give them advice or direction as to how and what they can do and let's just assume they do that Okay, and they restructure everything and it's good. Well, they're gonna have to pay fines with the regulators to get things back to good standing. They're gonna have to show their books. Of course, let's assume they got the audits and they have the proper restructuring, everything is done. Then our regulators will be like, yeah, this is good. We are satisfied. You paid our millions and millions of dollars in fines. Fine, that's good. We are now gonna allow you guys to now submit documents in order to get regulated or to be allowed to operate in these jurisdictions. So every country, every province, every city, every state, they have different security laws. So they'll need the proper business lawyers and the security lawyers to help them to structure it so that they're compliant in all the jurisdictions that they want to operate in. My opinion, I think they should focus on where the majority of their investors are, because that's where a majority of the capital is, and then find a way to get legally license there and ensure that they are doing the right things and they're properly licensed right that is one avenue that they can take now with us investors they will need to really explain to us literally why it took them eight months if not more to just communicate with us they will need a huge i don't know what they'll do but they will need to find a reason reasons and they will need to do something to make us happy again. A lot of people are not happy with them. A lot of people are hating them right now. And a lot of people put their trust in them and they're highly disappointed. So they're going to need to find something to say and they got to be authentic and really apologize. And a lot of people won't like it. Some people are going to want their money back. Some people want to pull out. People will want to put their money into different things. They would have to find a way to make all those people happy again. I also think they should make everybody who put money in Novatech. personally, I think they should do this. They should give everybody back their money, then start again and say, listen, we made a mistake. We didn't structure things properly. We have everything properly structured. We are opened again for business, but they should give everybody back their money first, especially those that put money in and didn't get their initial capital. I think if they made everybody whole that has not yet been made whole, for example, someone like myself who have put money, made a profit, I might not get whatever's left in the account, but they might say, well, we are now legally operating now. You have the ability to kind of reinvest with us legally because we have everything done properly. Now it's up to me whether or not now I want to start again with Novatech and maybe I'll say, okay, Maybe they don't have the MLM component. Maybe it's only one level of affiliate earnings. Or maybe they, they do have the affiliate earnings. They got the proper legalizations and documents and structures in place. And they still have their MLM component. I can say, okay, now I can really build a team under this company. Or I could personally put $1,000 and I know now they're legal. And they're actually trading, proper reporting, things are done. I can now actually make a plan and say, okay, now Novatech is in a right standing. I can make a good financial plan that can help me to over time get back the money that supposedly i lost but i didn't really lose because i'm already in profit but those that were made whole are able to get back their principal and now they can decide whether they want to reinvest back into Novatech or take the money elsewhere so i think they would have to give money back even after everything they're restructured properly i think they would have to give or not have to but i think they should give everybody back the money that will build good faith that would build a level of reconfidence and building that relationship again i think that will re-establish the investor company relationship that they need in order to kind of start building and rebuilding and rebranding again and that would be something that would be unheard of in this space right i think that would make a huge difference if they did that and then after that they need 
to better communicate with us. I think they should definitely open up head offices, have actual offices, do everything as much as it's all online. They're dealing with a lot of money and they're dealing with all sorts of investors from all over the world. I think personally they should open up a couple of offices, especially in the major regions where they operate so people can walk in, people can feel like it's a real company uh, and all those things. Now, there's a lot, as you can see, I am using my mind based on what I know in order to give you guys an idea of what they will need to do to be compliant and to be good. And it's a very, very sticky situation and there's just so much uphill battle, in my opinion, that it would probably be better for them to just give everyone money back and start a new company and then do everything right by the book than to try to savage or save Novatech the way it is right now. I think there's just so much so much uphill it will cost even more to bring them where they're supposed to be than to just dissolve the company cut losses and pay everybody back and then whatever profits they have left to start again and this time be legal about it be transparent about it tell everybody hey this is what happened let us give you guys back your money we'll start a new company and we're going to do it right i hope that makes sense all right so i know i said a lot and i I think about this every day because I also think about the model Nova Tech had and I think about it and I'm like, they had a good model, but they didn't manage it well. They didn't look into certain things, they didn't consider certain things, but they had a good model. How can we create our own Nova Tech? And every day I'm thinking about it. What can I do to be legal or compliant? And so I'm still researching, I'm still looking to, into certain things because it's a future goal of mine. Not to create another Nova Tech, but to create something of that similar structure but just much, much better, much better, much more clarity, much more transparency with legal regulations, just much, much, much better. Question is, can it be done? And I believe it can. Novatech has proven there's a market for it. They've also proven it can be done. Now, whether or not they were trading still yet to be told, I know they were at some point and we just don't know how they manage the monies and the influx of funds coming in and out. We don't know. And until an audit is done, we don't know how the books was run. And they've all gone silent. Their silence is what is really creating the turmoil for a lot of people because there's just so much uncertainty. I'm saying a lot. I am. I'm saying a lot. And forgive me for talking a lot in this video. But again, I've been looking at the model for Novatech and I told myself if there is a way for us to create something similar because it's possible and they've proven it is. Again, we don't know if they're trading and if they were trading, um, I've already said that, right? If they were trading, anyways, all I'm trying to say, guys, all I'm trying to say is that there's a whole hill to climb. And rather than to be stuck on Novatech, I think it's time everyone kind of moves on in hopes that, yes, they might come back in hopes that there's a way for us to recoup our funds. But just in case there is not a way. Wouldn't it be better to spend the time and energy to focus on abundance and to focus on new opportunities so that your spirit and your reciprocal activating system, as Tony Robbins would say, the thing that allows you to shift focus and it expands and then you get to see uh, different things coming to your radar based on your new awareness, right? So I think if we can shift our awareness to new opportunities, we're going to see new opportunities. And I have seen new opportunities. A lot of people are really hit hard with Novatech. They invested a lot. Some people have a very sour taste in their mouth. I get it. They put a lot of trust in it. I get it. I understand that and I respect that. But I've learned in this space now, the only thing you can trust is God. <laughs> and a solid strategy that has no dependence on one company, but a bucket of assets. It's the same rule applied in all asset classes. To build your portfolio where you have a array, like a very huge version or a very huge bucket of variety of investments so that if one goes down in this space or in this market one is going up in this market and it can kind of balance your portfolio so having a balanced portfolio is actually very critical even more in this DeFi space i'm looking for solid projects solid plans if they fail at least they would have ran a year two three years i would have made a little profit I would have taken that, diversify into something else that will go another year, two, three years, be in profit. And those are the kind of projects that will allow us to become millionaires if we're able to cash them early and get involved early. 
Now we don't know which ones they're gonna be, so along the way, we will have some that will fail. We will lose some money here and there. But if we are able to diversify and get as many as we possibly can based on your capacity, I think that's the way you win in this space. I don't know what you guys think. Let me know your thoughts. What would need to happen for Novatech to come back? And for some of you guys, what are your feelings? I know a lot of people think they're not coming back and some people really are pro Novatech. They think they're coming back. Either way, I'm indifferent. If they do, I already have my plan. One thing I can be grateful for Novatech for, and I honestly am very grateful, is they allow me to come into this space. Because of Novatech, I have this channel. Because of Novatech, I have my Wealth Mastermind group. Because of Novatech, I went to want to trade on my own. I was in trading opportunities before. I didn't really take it serious. There was Cuvera. There was other stuff I was involved in. But Novatech really pushed me to want to learn it myself. Top of that, Novatech has given me a lot of ideas in regards to their structure and how to create something like that for myself, not to mention bots and other opportunities. So I have to owe that to Novatech and say because of Novatech and the experience of Novatech, it has made me a better DeFi investor and a better uh, online marketer and all these other stuff that has come my way. So I can't complain and say, hey, I've not benefited directly from Novatech or, you know, I still got to give them the props. They did something really magical at one time or one point. But again, you also have to give non-respect when non-respect is due. And if they're not doing something right, we have to say it. I'm just a big believer in that. If someone's doing something right, you know, praise them, give them their honor. But if they're not, also let them know, hey, what you're doing is not right or what you're doing, I feel, is not the right way to go about it. But I am not here to judge anybody. I am not God. I am not here to judge somebody on what they did is right or what they did isn't right. I'll just say what I feel isn't right in my perspective or rightly done to me. But in any case, I appreciate you guys for watching, for tuning in, and we will keep tabs on Novatech. There's some court dates coming up. I am keeping tabs on it, and hopefully we can come to <laughs> see something different. I also am going to set up a meeting, hopefully with the OSC and with the SEC. I hope I can set a meeting with them, and they will allow, uh, basically create a podcast. They will come on the podcast. They can talk about it. I have a lot of questions for them personally, not just for Novatech, but in the space in general to see where their head's at. And I'm really, really looking forward to that. Nothing concrete is yet set, but I am working on that behind the scenes, guys. And I do have a lot on my plate, so just bear with me. But I will have that hopefully done. If not, then I'll let you guys know. But they are busy individuals as well. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I want to appreciate you guys. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. And until then, take care. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.